Hi everyone, so today is a bit of an impromptu makeup tutorial because my dear friend, the writer Sophie Dahl, came into my studio to bring me the second of her Madame Badoubada book. So this is a children's book and I was absolutely obsessed with the first one. And we started sort of reading through it and she was showing it to me and there's a whole section about Madame Badoubada's dressing table. And then Sophie started telling me how it was based on her grandmother's, her grandmother Violet's dressing table and how she has incredible, incredibly strong memories of sitting at a um, dressing table with her grandmother, watching her do her makeup and her beauty regimes and also the kind of products that she had. Well, of course, that got me hot under the collar because I started getting out all of my vintage stuff and um, we were talking about oil of Olay, which is what oil of Olay used to be we used to be called and how my gra grandmother used to use it as well. So, and I started getting out all of this makeup and all of this skincare, which um, the, of course the smells are incredibly evocative. And we just went down this whole kind of memory lane thing, which then made me want to, I was kind of chomping at the bit then to do Sophie's makeup because I wanted to recreate her grandmother's look on her face. So actually we're gonna do it now. She does have to pick up her daughters from school, so we haven't got long, but I just thought this is too good an opportunity to miss. And I actually had some of the um, eyeshadows and things that Sophie spoke about that her grandmother used to use. So um, this is kind of a tribute, I guess, to her grandmother, Violet, that was known as Lainey, and she sounds like an amazing, amazing woman. So we better get started. So I'm loving this impromptu makeup session. We have a little bit of foundation on, a little bit of concealer, touch of brow pencil but essentially we're kind of going to recreate your grandmother's makeup we're going to do grandmother's homage to the 50s yes um tippy hedron and the birds fantastic yeah. great well we're going to start with i know this was this was one of your granny's favorite eyeshadows she loved she loved bourgeois and does it smell i wonder does it have the same smell yes they smell they smell like sweets Mmm, so this is a really great shade as well for this um, era, really beautiful sort of sky blue. And then some of the stuff that we're looking at out there we've just pulled in here, and I know that this is one we have to talk about, and I actually haven't smelt it yet. I'm going to crack on with your eye makeup. Okay, but... so on my grandmother's dressing table there was always oil of Ule, mm -hmm. uh, Pond's Cold Cream, she used to put Vaseline on her lashes before she Ooh. went to bed at night because she said it made them strong. Mm. Sure Great old the... Hollywood <laughs> trick, yeah. <laughs> um, and there were the bourgeois pots and then a lot of Elizabeth Arden, who she called Lizzie Arden. Mm. Fantastic. Um, and my other grandmother used to call um, okay, right. Chanel number five, Chanel five. So, yeah. Oh, very nice. In the nose. Can I smell the oil of you? Then? Yes, please do. Packaging. This is beautiful. Oh my God, it's heaven. Smell that. Oh, that is my grandmother. That is my grandmother. <laughs> I'm going to cry. Oh, that's really like... Yeah, I know. That's hit the spot. I, I felt that's like... made me feel really emotional. Felt like that about the powder, about the yeah. Elizabeth Arden powder. It's, um, it's so so potent isn't it yeah. the power of scent just to totally throw you back connection is yeah. so intense I got, I got goosebumps yeah me too look that. i'm really goosebumpy <laughs> oh i want to smell it again it's like yeah you're bringing them back to life it's... yeah oh. well i after she, my grandmother died i inherited her dressing table and actually really? i found it too painful to have around for the first couple of years just because when i opened a drawer it smelled like her perfume mm. and I couldn't, it was, it was just too much, but actually I use it now. Um, and my kids will come. Which perfume did she use? She wore Oscar de la Renta. Um, and so when you'd open the drawers, it smelled like a mi mixture of Oscar de la Renta and then her face powder. Um, and yeah, it's it's sort of. It was like this stepping. face powder because these were all yes. for my vintage collection, so I've got all of this stuff. So this is the um, Ardenna powder, and um, it came in this box. Ardenna so Invisible pretty. Veil. 
And the colours are quite extraordinary, aren't they? I mean, this one, hopefully, oh, there we go. Yeah, I mean, that is another <laughs> potent is kicker. Smelling incredible. But they're so and pretty. The tangy, I know, look. look how 50s that is. Yeah. 50s, sort of early 60s. Can you smell that one? Yeah, they... I don't feel like face powder Ooh. smells like that anymore. No, no, it's really something so potent. This is What's so beautiful. That one? Oh, this is an eau de cologne, which I love that bottle so much. Look at that. The other one I really like, and I have to show you, which I didn't manage to show you before. Oh my um, God, this I don't is... know if your granny had one of these. Yes. But look at this. This is the traveling sort of vanity kit of the Ordenus skin tonic, eye lotion, all the different skincare in the pots. She had one like this. I think it's it incredible. Look. Lille de France. Mm. An excellent powder base. Oh. Especially oh, yes. effective on the neck and arms. Oh, yeah, this looks like calamine lotion. <laughs> yeah. Look, what's it, it doing? What's it doing to the it's arms? Tightening. <laughs> That's what I want to know. Oh my god, look at this one. The astringent gives smooth Smoothness and firmness by tightening loose skin and flabby muscles of the face and neck. Do not leave on overnight. Now, what will happen? I know. <laughs> oh, this sounds good. I'm going to try the it. Flabby try muscles this. are going to go wild if you leave it on overnight. I've looked at photographs of your beautiful granny, and she did like a lash, didn't she? That was kind of her thing. She liked a lash and a lip. So I'm going to do a really thin liner just to frame the eyes and this will really also frame the lashes. So I have a question, re pen liner, mm -hmm. which is how do you do the flick and get it the same on both sides? Okay, that's the, uh, the million dollar question. So start with one side mm -hmm. and look straight ahead in the mirror mm -hmm. because that's when you can kind of see roughly where you want it to end up. Because if you do it when your eyes are closed, if you look in this mirror mm -hmm. now, you know when your eyes are open, you're looking straight ahead. Yeah. And you think, oh, well, I actually need it to be wherever you want it to be, there or there or yeah. there. It, that will look really weird if you're trying to do it with your eyes closed. Yeah. But if you say it's like roughly there, yeah. then when your eyes are closed or you're looking down, just look down for me, darling, you've got somewhere to kind of aim for. I know it sounds... So you've got a bullseye. You've got a bullseye and yeah. you're going in the right direction, even if you're not going to get the shape perfectly now, because obviously when the eyes open, it's a completely different matter. You're kind of heading in the right direction and always keep some small Q-tips handy because, honestly, these are essential, especially these ones, which are the bamboo ones. They're very, very small. They're just great. Looking ahead in the mirror, they just remove any excess liner and just help you to create the perfect shape. So then once you've kind of followed your guide, it still won't look quite right. Just have a look until you look, because look straight ahead. Ah. So you want to get your shape as it is when it's straight ahead. Okay, so we all make the mistake of going that way when really we should be going that way. Yeah, I mean, it depends on your eye shape. This is the thing. And that's why it's kind of really good to keep looking back at your eyes open because as lovely as it looks when your eyes are closed and you draw this perfect line yeah you're not walking around like that and yeah. you're talking to people and and people are sort of seeing you in action so what you want is the eyes open straight ahead like turn to the side and say ah okay it's going to look good there and if you have like everyone has different folds on both eyes like mm -hmm. no two eyes are the same so for me, for example, I've got two folds on one side and three on the other. So I almost need to jump over a little hurdle on one okay. of them. So <laughs> this sounds really complicated. It's not. It's not. Kind of map it out where you think you're going to yeah. end up. Then what I'm going to do is, yeah, I'll probably have where to. Where do you want me there? Yeah, so look at me here. Mm -hmm. And then I'll go back in. This is just with a powder with a damp brush. And I kind of just soften that line because here we want to sort of a suggestion of the liner to carry on over where there is your natural fold in your eye. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to kind of create something which doesn't actually work with your... Okay, so you're following the, you're following the fold. Yeah, I'm just following okay. it or going across it so that it, it's, it's gonna work for your eye shape. And then if you look that way for me, just over there, my darling, I'm just gonna start into this inner corner. And if you kind of do this at the end, 
you get a nice little sort of finish to your to line let's see and then we can soften all of this and look that way again actually open a little bit and then just draw that corner see now we're getting when you look straight ahead now we're starting to get a nice yep. shape and a nice swoop when your eyes are closed it will look like it's got a little angle to it yep. but it doesn't matter because your eyes are hopefully going to be open most, hopefully. most of the time <laughs> <laughs> you never know yeah so i've just curled lashes i've done a really thin layer there just of mascara on one eye because I'm going to use some of the individual lashes. I'm going to start with short at the inner corner and then end with longer ones so that we have this quite sleepy, sleepy shape of um, elongated rather shape of liner which I think really suits you. So I've done mascara on the upper lashes and now I'm going to drop on lots and lots of individual lashes and then plenty of mascara on the lower lashes too because we have to have this look lashy in honour of Violet. I'm just going to do a little sculpt, not that you need it, those cheekbones to die for. And of course they wouldn't have done this, there wouldn't have been any contouring. Well so there would have been actually, but it wasn't contouring in the way that we use special contour powders now, they would have done it with blush. And so if you were doing a kind of Marilyn look, what, what, was the sh what sort of shadow, what colour shadow? Oh, for Marilyn, that would have been... It depends. I mean, she wore so many different looks, depending on if she was being a bit casual and going out herself or whether she was doing a photo shoot. But it would have been a creamy, almost white colour. Mm -hmm. And then she used... Um, I mean, it's very similar to this liner shape. In fact, it was quite funny, because I can see from your lashes here, we have this line, which she would have actually drawn... Well, her makeup artist drew on. Yeah. But here we have that, and it's giving that impression of that really sleepy Greta Garbo sensual eye. For blush and highlight I thought we'd do this one by Chanel which I'm not really sure is available anymore but I think this is so great for this kind of a look and also a little bit of um, a bourgeois blush which in homage to your granny we have to go for Tribute bourgeois yes when we can. I love that Peachy is really yeah, it's pretty. beautiful. Yeah. I don't think they make this anymore. So I must say congratulations on Madame Badoubadar is back. Madame Badoubadar is back. I'm so excited to read my copy, but please give me a little preview. So Madame Badoubadar and the Old Bones. She's back. Oh, she's back. She's Look back her. in her <gasps> explorer's she's outfit. Fabulous. Got her scarf on. Yep. She's um, got a lipstick on. She's got her eyeshadow she's on. She's ready. She's got blue eyeshadow on, so this is perfect. Homage to Madame Badoubadar and the grannies. Yes. So in this book, Mabel and Madame Badoubadar are continuing their adventures and actually one of them starts around her dressing table. Oh, so nice. Mabel finds something in Madame Badoubadar's dressing table um, that shouldn't be there. Oh, she okay. She might have borrowed it. Right, you know, okay. She's a bit of a borrower. Right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> she's nuanced. Yeah, yeah. Like the best people, yeah. she's nuanced. Um, so uh, they might have to return the thing that she's borrowed okay. in the dead of night. Right, so okay. There's, yeah, there's, oh, exciting. There's some subterfuge. Actually, it's about female adventurers mm. and um, about intergenerational friendship and um I do mascara. sorry I didn't mean to stop you talking then that's all right um I, I don't have that female thing of being able to uh multitask I can't, <laughs> <laughs> I can't, can't uh, talk and sorry talk yeah and I should I, I chose my moment really my badly lash. there um no the book is basically a story of um unlikely friendship and adventure yeah lovely yeah i love the illustrations they're so beautiful so they're by she's Lauren just O'Hara. so fun. they're so beautiful they just she creates worlds within worlds and it's the thing i really really admire in what she does um and the detail yeah. and the color yes is so gorgeous um and I think also there's something about returning to a world that you know already for both of us, I think for me writing it and for her drawing it, um, we knew we knew all the characters, we knew where we were going. The dressing table of dreams. Yes. This is 
stunning. And that's the dressing there table. There it is. Jeans. Look at all the pots. Yeah. And I, I sent her this. pictures of my grandmother's dressing table because when I was a little girl, it felt like there were 507 drawers. Mm -hmm. um, and did you used to look in all those drawers? Yes, and they, everything felt totally magical um, and mysterious. So there were little pots and also sort of she'd had tons of boiled sweets and palmer violets and... <laughs> Just um, random stuff. Yeah, just weird <gasps> random stuff. Yeah, little all, notes, little well, letters, yes. little yeah. Um, so old perfumes, letters. She had pictures in her dressing table. So under the glass, mm -hmm. there were black and white pictures of everyone, of and it just yeah. Glamorous nights out. Yes, I'm sure. Yes, and old matchboxes oh, everywhere. Yes. As, and she didn't smoke, so I don't know what yeah. she. Did. Oh no, the, the matchbox thing was huge. Yeah, I mean, even used to do lipsticks it, that looked like matchboxes. Okay. It was quite, it was such a big thing. And did your granny have a dressing? Did she have yeah, a dressing table? Yeah, she had a dressing table. And I used to lo love to go. There was often a lot of photos in there that I used to go and look at. Um, she was definitely not as glam as my mum. My mum's, mm -hmm. you know, still to this day, red lipstick every day. Yeah. Like, you know, I can go in very early in the morning and the red lips are already yeah. on. My granny was more practical, but she loved the oil of Yule. That was her thing. Oil of Yule and pink lipstick. Yes. And... Um, I remember she had an Elizabeth Arden one, which I think was the... Um, I'm going to get it for you, okay. actually. It was this one, which, funnily enough, Arden Pink, um, Jackie Onassis used to wear as oh, well. Oh, wow, look at I that. I mean, this looks... This has had wow. seen better days. It's it quite has. old, yeah. But it was, it, it was quite a sort of... That will smell. It, but it smells like the theatre. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Yeah. It really does. It's heaven. And then she would have worn um, any pink lipsticks. If she ran out of pink lipsticks, she would just buy a pink lipstick somewhere. Okay. So it, it did change. It wasn't always this one. Um, but yeah, she would try um, lots of different pink lipsticks and that was it. She was did quite she practical. Her, did she paint her nails? Yeah, she loved the nails being painted. She liked me to paint her nails. And actually, the thing that I really remember about her is her nail shape. Yes. Like, I can remember it so well because I used to paint her nails for her. I used to really enjoy to do that. And she used to like this, like, pink sugared almond colour. Yeah. That was her favourite colour. So I used to paint. And I can remember her, the shape of her index nails so well. Isn't, that, am yeah. isn't that amazing? The microscopic... I remember... My granny had very oval, oval nails, and I, I also remember that. And also, she used to wear um, a silk bed jacket, and it had ribbons. Beautiful. And I remember being a little girl and touching the ribbons on her silk bed jacket, and just thinking it was the most comforting Beautiful feeling in thing. the world. Yeah, oh, that's so lovely. Please do let us know in the comments. We'd love to hear all of your grandmother's yes. stories. That will be so fun. The granny stories. Yes, please. So I thought dance card for this look because it is perfect for the 50s, 60s kind of vibe. And I know you love the colour. I'm going to use a little bit of pencil first. And we're going to go pouty. You look like your granny. Your granny... Um, Patricia. Yeah. Yeah. You leave in the little dimple, everything. I can see the face. So we're both, but I've got Granny Patricia and then um, Violet. Oh, Violet. Violet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Violet was Isn't that dimples. A great name? Yeah. Oh, Violet's dimples. Yeah, Sorry, I've got it wrong. But she hated, hated, hated the name Violet, which I Did love. She? And yeah, so she was always referred to as Laney because um, her last name was Lane. Okay. So she, was, she wouldn't let anyone she wouldn't call know. her Violet. Oh, I love that name. Mm. Oh, this is perfect. Mmm. It's so joyous, that colour. It really is a happy colour. Love it. I actually now have dance cards on my um on my counters. We made little dance Sweet. cards. Sweet. So that when people are having their makeup done they get a dance card and we write all the details on there. I think you are done. This is the impromptu tribute to our grandmother's look. Have a look. 
What are you going to do today? <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to do the school run. Oh, brilliant! I'm oh, going to my pick God. my kids up oh, from school. Right, I want to hear what was said. I need to know what other mums said. Well, I think my children will tell me I'm wearing too much makeup yeah. and that I can't walk next to them. Right, okay, yeah, because they're at that told. age. Yeah, yeah, they're not going to be into this. No. no way. Horror. Horror, horror, horror. Oh, even better then. What fun. It's Sophie Dahl. I've crashed Lisa's studio this morning with my new book, Madame Badubada and the Old Bones. The Dressing Table of Dreams. The next day was Sunday, and on Sundays, Madame Badubada and I meet in room 32 for Elevenses, which is somewhere between breakfast and lunch and has a biscuit. Throw those curtains wide, darling, Madame Badubada laughed. It's time to see what's in the dressing table of dreams. Pick a drawer, any drawer. Hmm. Draw 503, please, I said. I think this is it, she said, pulling open a drawer near the bottom. A shimmering green light filled the room. Oh, heavens above, Madame Badoubadar groaned and slammed it shut. What the dickens is that, I asked. Darling, it's nothing. I'd totally forgotten I had it. It's not even the right drawer. Shady, I said. Deeply suspicious, in fact. <laughs>